I can't believe I'm saying this, but we are in Lahore in Pakistan, one of the most vibrant and exciting cities I have ever been to. And on today's menu, we've got food, amazing people stories, beautiful culture and architecture, so much stuff. This is going to be an amazing day in this beautiful, bustling metropolis. I'm Eva Zubek and this is DW Travel in Lahore, Pakistan. Lahore is hands down the cultural capital of Pakistan. Much of its surviving historic architecture hails from the Mughal era, back when the region's culture blossomed and thrived. The Lahore of today is an irresistible melting pot of history, energy and life. And today we will explore it with the help of the ultimate local. Hello! How are you? Welcome to Lahore! Thank you so much! So excited to be here! Same here! Meet Adil Lahori. His family have been living in Lahore since generations and he knows the city like the back of his hand. Today, he will be our local guide. This is the typical style of the Lahori welcome. Oh my gosh! Amazing! What's the name of this shop? This is Patka. Patka. The color actually is like belongs to the happiness. Oh, beautiful. And these are the garlands for you for your hand. Oh wow! Like this? Yes. Amazing too! Now the period is complete. This is actually represent the culture of Lahore. Adil wasn't about to waste any time. He had our first taste of Lahore planned right there and then. This is like more than uh, 60 years old shop. Would you like to drink the lassi or make yourself? I would love to try, yeah. This is actually the traditional drink of Lahore actually. The lassi actually used to be for the breakfast, like after the breakfast. So if you want to try it, you can try it. Like, Just roll it? Yeah, more fast. More fast, yes. Like yes. <laughs> Even that, it's gonna mix up. <laughs> if you use like this one. Oh, now they have the taste. This is the professional. Try it. Again, use this one, your, like, must be your hands. Oh. <laughs> Any better? Any better. Lassi is a fermented milk drink, super popular across Pakistan and India. Here, it's made fresh from buffalo milk. All right, I think it's time for the taste test. Yeah. It's super fresh, very sweet. Obviously, you can see it's so creamy and frothy. Oh my gosh, this is really an amazing breakfast. Our next stop in Lahore is the legendary and mysterious walled city one of the oldest neighborhoods in Lahore, dating back over 1,000 years. This is the beating heart, the soul of the city. So we are right now outside the Lahori gate. This is the first gate of Lahore built by the Akbar. Let's go inside. It's actually quite amazing, the feeling of walking down these streets here in the walled city of Lahore. It's it's like a maze, a labyrinth of history and stories. You can just imagine the lives of the people throughout the centuries in all these houses, in all these buildings. The spirit, the soul, this place has it all. There's lots of things hanging up on the wires just above the tree, like towels. Why are those here? Actually, it is a sign that you are close to the hammam. Hammam. Hammam actually is a sh that you take a shower uh -huh. and it's a barber shop aspect here. Oh wow! So, yeah. Look at like look at the desi style of the barber, oh, and they have a western music. Enjoy the like salon, right? So they have everything. Look at that. This is the old style to shave. Ah, so everybody's just sitting around relaxing like in a spa. Exactly. Okay, so tell us, Adil, where are we right now? What's going on here? It's very busy. It's a busy day because today is Sunday. So Sunday is considered the latest shopping day. This is, by the way, uh, oldest bazaar in Lahore, especially inside the wall city and that is the Kashmiri Bazaar. So is this the kind of place that you would come to if you wanted to buy some 
really special outfit for a wedding or a party? Is this where you come? Everything you can get it here. It's a very like comical price. Okay, look, I have a favor to ask of you. Can you help me get some souvenirs for me, my friends, my family? Sure. From why the Kashmiri not? market in Lahore. Sure, why not? Right. You can buy it. No Let's problem at all. If you be the gift for you, no problem. Shopping. Let's go. So colorful, so beautiful. So 200 rupees for two sets of glass bangles. That's about one dollar, one dollar fifty. Ooh, check this out. These here are called parandas, and they are accessories that women put in their hair on special occasions, like weddings, for example. I kind of wish I could just wear these on a daily basis, you know? So this is how you would tie it into your hair. Now I can't really do it properly, so I can't show you in much detail, but let's try a rough cut. So you make a braid with your hair, and the paranda becomes a part of your braid. It's definitely not perfect, but you see what I mean. The walled city is the kind of place that draws you in with its energy, its structured chaos. I feel like you could spend a decade here and still experience new things every single day. Meanwhile, our next stop is the flower garland market. This is where flower sellers make so-called gajras, or flower bracelets and decorations for weddings. So here is an inspiration. If you ever go to a wedding and you want to give someone cash, but you feel that it looks weird and awkward in an envelope, you can now be inspired to create a garland out of dollar bills. <laughs> Look how beautiful, super elegant. Very, very showy and flashy, the perfect wedding gift. But no time to waste. This next place is going to blow your mind. Look, Lahore is such an incredibly rich, historic city, and there's a lot of beautiful buildings and mosques here, but there is one, one that every time I see it, no matter how many times I've seen it, it just always feels so magical to look at it. The most beautiful mosque I've ever seen on all of my travels around the world. The Wazir Han Mosque. Let's go and check it out. The Wazir Han Mosque has been nestled in the very heart of the walled city since the 17th century, when it was built during the reign of Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan. He's the same person who commissioned the Taj Mahal in India. Covered with elaborate frescoes and Persian-style tiles and painted with Islamic verses all over, it's pretty astounding that the Wazir Han Mosque took only seven years to complete, back in the 17th century. So I've just sat down here in the middle of Wazir Khan Mosque for a few minutes and honestly being here, sitting here, being connected to this place just feels so serene. It feels like I am in this oasis in the middle of such a busy, chaotic, exciting city but here everything is suddenly quiet and you know what, when you look around all the decorations that you see, all the architecture that you see, all these mosaics this is all the original stuff from hundreds of years ago. There's nothing new here. All around us, the city changes, moves on, transforms every single day. But this, this mosque has remained the same. It's this one place of constancy in the heart of Lahore. I really hope that it survives the test of time. After a whirlwind day in the world city, it was time to say goodbye to Adil and move on to our next adventure. I'm about to meet a friend of mine. She told me to come here to the outskirts of Lahore to meet her here and she told me to bring a motorbike helmet. There she is! Hi! Good to see you! What a bike! I'm finally here! <laughs> This time, I want you to actually ride the bike. Really? Yes. Do you trust me with that? Well, <laughs> I guess I can trust you, but if uh, I can you know, teach you how to ride, then I'm sure that you'll be able to. You know. Amazing. Are you ready? But safety first. <laughs> All right. 
This is Zenit Irfan. Zenit is known as Pakistan's very own motorcycle girl. She's one of the first women to have ridden across the country's mountainous north on her motorbike. In a country where women on bikes are still a very uncommon sight, she's a true pioneer and an inspiration for girls and women. You've thrown me in the deep water. <laughs> You're right in the deep water. This is a challenge it. you have to do. Because you know they say that you know four wheels, they just move the body. It's a very famous saying. But two wheels move the soul. I love that. Yeah. That is the that that just gave me so much motivation. <laughs> So, release the clutch slowly, slowly, and then okay. gently add some gas. There's something about riding a motorbike that just sets your soul on fire. Now, I would love you to actually sit behind me and experience the motorcycle a little bit, like on, you know, like faster speed. Yeah. So that you can understand how it feels like, and then we'll go and catch up with some food. Let's have something to eat. Perfect, let's do it. And so Zenit and I hopped on her bike together, attracting quite a bit of attention. Our destination? back to the center of Lahore, where we plan to get some typical local street food. How is it like? It's amazing. <laughs> but uh, you can see that in Lahore, there's no point in having a car. You have to yes. have a motorbike. The traffic is so crazy. And you can, and now I'm going to tell you something's going to happen to you. What? Take it off. <laughs> no? If I can, it's so dark. This. <laughs> this is called helmet hair. Beautiful. <laughs> this is proof that you did something in your life. <laughs> I think after all the adventure we should eat some. That's a good idea. What should we have? Golgape. Golgape. Golgape is like a street food over here and it's very famous. One of my favorite uh, street foods. Uh, Alright, I'm ready for it. These are the Golgapas as you can see. They're very crunchy uh -huh. and you have to dip it in some sort of like a sour water. So basically like chips with salty water. Yes. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Oh, and right. these are gold gopals, as you can see. <laughs> I'm going to teach you how to actually eat it. This is the water that I was talking about, which is pani. The pani. Uh huh. Gold gopay ka pani ke hai. This is this pani. Uh huh. It's, it's very sore. So you yes. feel tingling sensation over here. Yeah. And then we have over here chaat. This is chaat. And as you can see, this is boiled potatoes and chickpeas. Uh huh. And then we have a lot of chutney. So this is sweet chutney. As you can see, okay. It's good. And if you feel even this is not spicy enough, then you kill your tongue by this, burn your tongue by adding the spice. This and I'm going to make you do it. This looks dangerous. No, you don't have to do it, okay? Now, with this dish, there is no like clean, proper way to eat this dish, okay? It's a very messy snack, I would say, okay? Now, what you have to do is that you have to take a chart. And fill it as much as you like over inside the hood. Oh, nice, nice. Like this, nice. fill it in. Uh huh. I can already see how messy it's gonna get. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is enough for me. And then some chutney. Yes. I just have a little bit. Oh. Okay, so you add a little bit of spice. I think this much Ooh, is yeah. enough. Oh, wow, wow. That's a lot. That's a lot. You're brave. <laughs> okay, now the moment has arrived where this, is, this will get messy. So the thing with gulgapay is that it gets wet as soon as you you know add it in the water. Okay. You know, so it starts to become very soggy. So you have to eat it immediately. You can't eat it in pieces. So dip and, and eat. eat. Okay. So I'm gonna dip it now and. Woo! <laughs> you have to press so good. <laughs> My face literally went. Oh, I love it. Okay, now you're trying. A little bit worried. <laughs> I'm a little bit worried. Okay, I don't know if I can handle this kind of level of spice. Okay, so. But. 
Okay, so add a little. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll add it for you. Some chutney. This is some chutney. Okay, add it as much as you like. <laughs> can I add the other chutney as well? Yes, what? you can. Yeah, this is made of yogurt. This is raita. Right. Right. We call it raita because it's mint leaves mixed with yogurt. Amazing. Yeah. And some of the spices. Yeah. <laughs> Add your own risk. You know, this is add your own risk. I'll start slow, modest, like this. Okay. Uh -huh. And get ready. Now dip it and eat it as fast as you can. Dip and eat. Yeah, just. It's all the way down. One, two, three. Oh. oh she became red. Oh, she can feel all the. Spicy oh my God. <laughs> this is the most intense thing I've ever <laughs> eaten in my entire life. I saw you getting red. It's the burst of flavors in your mouth. Yeah. It's the spice, the sour flavors, the bitterness, yeah. the crunch, the softness. And it's a huge bite. Yes. It really overwhelms you. Zenit is not only a great motorbike rider, but also an amazing guide to local street food as it turns out. Before parting ways, I wanted to ask her a few questions about her experience as a female rider right here in Pakistan. So Zenit, how did you start riding in the first place? Well, uh, it's a long story that I started riding a really long time ago, back in 2013. So initially, it was a way for me to connect with my father because uh, my father passed away when I was very young, I was around 10 months old. And when I found out that he was actually a crazy traveler and he wanted to pursue traveling as a passion, especially on a motorcycle, I knew that um, I would one day do this for him. Fast forward 2013, I was going to university, about to go to university and I was facing a lot of problems, you know, in terms of commuting. So that's when my actually uncle proposed an idea that why don't you buy a small bike, you know, like a small bike like this. Mm -hmm. So that it can help uh, Zenith, you know, be independent when it comes to commute. Amazing. Yeah. And then, since then, my life has changed because, I, you know, I was able to get the confidence. And I, and as you saw, you know, there's a lot of traffic, a lot of people, you know, horning in your ears, yeah. and it gets very really scary. So I got used to it. And on the 14th of August, 2015, left for Punjab once. So it's that pass that connects Pakistan with China. So way up in the north of the mountains. Yes. And yeah, and since then I got viral, got popular. This is back four, five years ago. And it was new for people to know that, oh, so women can ride and they can do adventure riding. Mm -hmm. So two things. And since then, I my life has not been the same doing all these crazy trips and projects also because of social media because of a lot of awareness and since I was also posting a lot about my adventures a lot of girls right now you will actually see more and more girls driving right you've now you've been a real inspiration to women I wouldn't say I was really? I mean but I yeah things are changing well I hope you manage to inspire I'm sure you will manage to inspire many many more people to come with all of your future adventures inshallah I hope so I do alright yeah. one day adventure together? yes now that you know how to ride and you did a very good job. Thank you. Yes, you know how <laughs> to eat. Go learn to from the best. <laughs> yes, thank Lovely you. Lovely so seeing much. you. Me too, I'm so happy. inspiring one of the most inspiring women travelers that I've ever come across right here in Pakistan before I let you go I really want you to experience a taste of Lahore by night it's as if the city never sleeps the streets come alive at night just as they do during the day shopkeepers still doing business food stalls still serving fresh snacks we found a little oasis in the middle of the chaos. So we were just walking around the streets of Lahore in the evening and we stumbled upon this street called the Musician Street. And this shop is an actual working, living workshop where professionals, musicians themselves, actually create beautiful wooden handmade instruments from scratch. It's amazing to see them work. 
almost like the real thing. These drums are called the tabla, and they're an instrument traditional to the Indian subcontinent. The men who make them are musicians too. This man here has been handcrafting tablas for 40 years. And that's just a short glimpse into the ancient city of Lahore, one of Pakistan's greatest cultural treasures. Lahore is packed with so much energy, history and life on every corner that I think it's impossible to squeeze the essence of this metropolis into a short film. In order to truly experience it, you have to see it for yourself.